enforcement. They are checking through your FBI records. Uh, they're checking with all immigration agencies, you know, how many fiancés have you filed for? What was the turnout of that application? I'll tell anybody this. I'll have bridging from DR. Yeah, man, he make me sick, man. He got on a DR, and he's from the DR, too. Tell me do this to him own country, women. He got on to the DR, handsome black man, yeah? And I don't know. I don't think Latin people really, some of them consider themselves black. But he look black to me. Um, every time him go down, by the time him come back, him have a fiance. Really? You get these women hopes. Yeah, man, I have to stop talking to him, man. Um, you get these women hopes up that they're coming and they're gonna have a husband, have a relationship. Then you with your cross yourself after a while, you decide to not now go work and bloops. Yeah. After the fourth time, I just, I just couldn't bother. But you will be vetted, yeah? And I, this is not just restricted to the fiancé visa. This also involves the regular application as well. The social media. And I, I know when I speak to... My clients, I usually ask them about their social. You can't have your social media and you post up different, man. You can't have your social media and you're doing a marriage-based case or you're doing a fiancé case and you're saying you're single. What? Where? Ladies, sometimes only for check the status on a man. Take out immigration out of this. Check your man status. Yeah? And see what's their relationship status. And I'm gonna encourage you. Anyone who has as their status, it's complicated. You need to avoid that. That's a loser. Anybody who is coming to you and their relationship status is complicated ladies sometimes you take on your own problems knowingly people feel sorry for you when you don't know someone approaches you and their status is that it's complicated i don't fall for that that makes sense no sir we can't do this all right you see, once your petition is approved, it's valid for four months. When you go to the embassy, they give you six months. As long as you leave within that six months visa, you're fine. The embassy also has the discretion to revalidate that four-month period and increase in increments of four months, yeah? But here's a problem. If the embassy calls, sometimes you make it past USCIS, and you think you're fantastic, yeah? Everything is great. Book, book, book up in a, when you reach the embassy now, and you meet that officer, and the officer not like you, and look on the history of your man, and once he's here in the testimony yeah because i want you guys to understand you when you're going before the officers you're testifying so you look at the testimony and it is such that oh no no makes sense yeah the officer them do them job but only, when you go to the embassy i don't you think it's over because it was approved from uscis oh no god the, 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 the embassy no 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 makes sense guess what got happen? Yeah, man, I'm going to send it back for revocation. Oops. <clears throat> Preparation is the key. Yeah? All right. The hardest thing me ever hear, and in the door laugh, I boss the Negro in my guardy embassy, I'm ready for go out fine, right? And when I reach the embassy now, everything I go on good. Till the officer say, so when's the last time you hear from your wife? Oh, 
that the girl there, a long time she not call me. Bloops. Bloops. You know, I'm sending back for revocation. What? Okay. So, what happens when your U.S. citizen petitioner dies? And like I tell anyone, you get up, you're healthy, be very grateful. Yeah? You have people who, they couldn't even get up out of bed this morning. You know about what about it, but back in the day, I used to, to, to jump out. No, I'm holding a life. No, I take my time. Yeah. See, I'm so. I take my time, goody. So, death is a serious thing. And when your US citizen petitioner dies, right? That's the end of your application. If it is that you either are still in your home country and it's being processed, or you come to the United States and you're never married. So don't take, I don't think anyone should be taking life for granted. And I think if you are around people who they're always just so pessimistic, avoid them. I'm going to encourage you. Careful of the people you surround yourself with, the, the negative energy that they put forth. It, it, it also comes into your life and you just, 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 just watch who you surround yourself with, right? So when the petitioner dies and you haven't left your home country, you haven't come into the United States or you have come and you haven't married, that's, that's, that's the end of it. Yeah. So one of the things you should be focusing on is once you get that visa, make sure you leave right away. Make sure you try and marry as soon as possible. Some people love drag out things as soon as you can. That's, that's my encouragement to you. Yeah? Now, some people become aware of the process that you are prior to you even going to the embassy. And what will happen is they'll withdraw the application. Mm-hmm. I'm not playing with you. They are going to send, I call it uh, a love letter to USCIS, honey. Yeah, they are going to withdraw. So I, I just want you to just be careful, right? With the applications that you're doing. I, I don't know. I can't. I don't know in terms of, and I think that the citizen petitioner becomes very grateful where prior to you actually coming here, they are able to see you for who you are and where it is that you are just, you, you show that you're going to be a problem. Yeah. Yeah. It is, 